Hello. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, third uh, day of Manila PTG. So uh, we have we've had great discussions over this uh, over the course of this week, and uh, today we will have uh, some more. Uh, so we will start our day with uh, the all things Ceph topic. Um, there are a couple of uh, things we uh, have to to talk about during this uh, Ceph uh, hour. So yeah, uh, it's a good it's good to see that uh, the, the Ceph folks managed to to put like some some topics together and get some some people involved. And uh, after this, we'll have the operator hour, which will be from uh, 15 to 16 UTC. Uh, so yeah, there's the link is wrong here, but uh, yeah, there is uh, already uh, an either pad for the operator as well. So um, yeah, we will use this one uh, in, in uh, basically one hour. So, and after that, we'll have like another topic for Ceph, which is the CephFS drivers CI decoupling. And we'll close our day with uh, a D, uh, another topic, uh, like the better use of debug statuses. So yeah. Um, I'm, yesterday was a, a good day, a productive day. Um, I'm glad to be here today as well, and I, I, I'm sure we will have another productive day of discussions. So first topic of the day, all things Ceph, uh, Victoria, Francesco, and Gotham uh, for users. Awesome. Thanks, Carlos. Um, we didn't really coordinate this, but I guess uh, I'll hand it over to Victoria. We've put a bunch of things together in the uh, Etherpad. Uh... Hey, Carlos. Hey, Gotham. Uh, yes, I mean, we have several topics we need to cover. Uh, I see, though, that we have in our meeting um, Franks, uh, Phil's from the NFS Ganesha team, uh, and also Romana. Uh, so I guess the best um, topic to start is about the ingress aware NFS Ganesha topic. Um, I can, well, uh, go ahead and explain a bit what is the issue and um, which are the current blockers we are seeing, and then um, hand over to Frank to, to cover uh, a solution, a proposed solution for this issue. So, um, well, this topic is Ingress Aware and FS Ganesha. Um, uh, the thing is that now with the new driver implementation, we are using Ceph ADM. And uh, in, in this deployment, we have Ceph Orchestrator, uh, which is now capable of creating an ingress service uh, to front end a cluster of active active NFS Ganesha instances uh, by a single load balance IP address. Um, there is more details about this on the Ceph uh, documentation. Uh, it's linked on the Etherpad. Uh, obviously, there are many benefits to this since uh, basically it allows us to deploy um, Manila with CFS and FS uh, with uh, multiple uh, Ganesha instances instead of one as we have been doing nowadays. Um, and well, uh, whereas we got those benefits, uh, we are uh, facing some issues uh, on how we are deploying and how our driver works. Um, basically, uh, Manila client restrictions, um, the access rules will not work. Uh, since NFS Ganesha uh, sees the ingress services IP instead of the client IP addresses. Um, so uh, we have been discussing different approaches on how to, to uh, fix this one, um, but it seems that perhaps the best um, approach would be the implementation of the proxy protocol, um, which, well, uh, I, I will allow Frank to uh, cover a bit about that, what it means and, and what is the the actual fix that needs to go in place. Um, Frank, would you like to, to cover this part? Uh, sure, thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the HA proxy protocol is a um, protocol that adds some information in the in this uh, TCP stream uh, on the git passes the actual client address uh, <clears throat> on the TCP stream so that the server, in this case, uh, the Ganesha, NFS Ganesha server 
uh, would be able to um, extract that client IP address information and then um, treat the connection internally as coming from the client, which would allow the, the server to respond directly to the client um, and also make, um, in NFS Ganesh's case, uh, we're interested in making export access um, permission checks uh, based on the client IP address. So having that client IP address available um, will make NFS Ganesh's job easier um, and, and allow those export permissions uh, based on client IP address to, to function. Um, and the, the plan is to handle this all within the um, NTIRPC um, layer of the, the Ganesha um, setup so that the NTIRPC would, would see the HA proxy protocol activity and would um, capture that client IP address and present it um, so that in a way that NFS Ganesh, the actual NFS Ganesha code would not need any changes. Um, and, and, and this protocol is, is pretty simple. So this is anticipated to be a relatively simple um, process to to do that and um, where the Gotham has uh, pulled up the um, Google Doc that um, I've sort of captured uh, the justification and explanations. Uh, And that, and that goes into some some level of of design detail. I, I don't know that we have to delve into that in this call unless uh, the, somebody has got some questions on that. Are there, are there any questions? Not to my side, but I don't know about the audience, if they want to know uh, any specific detail or you wanna check uh, on the different docs we are pointing to and then maybe follow up in offline. So I, I don't have questions on this. This implementation looks the right way to handle this uh, and solve this problem. Actually, I think in the on the Ceph side, the Rook project also needs this kind of feature. If you if, if they rely on the load balancer ingress provided by Kubernetes, so this is probably the best way to solve this problem um which is kind of standard in Ceph because the ha proxy and keep alive d pattern is already present in the Ceph adm solution uh for both rgw and now nfs so it's uh just wanted to highlight that this kind of solution is seems the one of the right way to solve this problem and other projects can benefit on this, uh, this fix, this feature. Uh, yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, thank you for pointing that out, Francesco. Um, that will definitely. This is, um, and and it, and from my research and starting to you know understand what HA proxy is, it you know it looks like it's used for a variety of different uh, client server types of, of solutions. Um, and so having this 
in the Ganesha toolbox um, will be very helpful to to other uh, uses also. So, um, uh, so so definitely, thank you, thank you for pointing that out. Awesome. Thanks, Frank. Uh, I do see another uh, call out in the Ingress Aware Ganesha uh, stuff on line 16 to a different solution. Yeah, I we... just added this uh, this line. Um, I, I think the proxy protocol is the best way to solve this problem because we can solve many different use cases. And as I mentioned, there are different projects that can rely on this uh, on this feature. Uh, there is an effort that I wanted to mention in the Ceph ADM project to solve this problem on a, in a different way, which means um, basically remove the HA proxy layer and just provide uh, KeepLFD uh owning the virtual ips basically and providing them as stable ip tied to the ganesha instance this um uh has some drawbacks because we can just um solve the ha the ha problem the active active problem with ganesha and we should uh if we rely on this kind of solution we should um make sure that uh, just one Ganesha instance is uh, deployed by the orchestrator because there is only one floating EP associated with one Ganesha. And this also um, raise a couple of other problems that should be addressed in CFDM if you want to extend this uh, patch, this, this model to uh, solve the active active uh situation because you need more virtual ips so the, the deployer should provide more than one virtual ip for ganesha and then you have to keep track of the um, virtual ip which is assigned to that ganesha instance from the deployer perspective that can be triple or another one that's uh, always the same so I, I think it's worth mentioning because this is a different solution. It doesn't solve the pro the active active problem at the moment, but just make an official parity, let's say, with the what Triple O today does, which is the active passive Ganesha owned by uh, with a virtual IP owned by Peacemaker. Makes sense. And so the, I mean, if you were to scale. In this perspective, it is that you would you would end up spawning more than one Ganesha instance, and each one would have a stable IP address um, that would have yeah. you know a different export path represented on uh, Manila for each of these shares. Yeah. So I I, I wanted to compare the two um, solutions because uh, this we can see the drawbacks and the the fact that the proxy protocol is probably um the best solution that we have today to solve the scalability problem but we may also want romana probably commenting on this uh change in the orchestrator yeah thanks francisco i yeah i i couldn't completely understand uh what you meant by uh the issue with active active with uh, active active problem with uh, the solution to spawn each Ganesha with its own virtual IP. Um, and all of these Ganeshas belong to the same cluster. Um, can you elaborate on that, please? Um, I think uh, the, the problem I see there is that the HA proxy model is uh, different because you can just have one virtual IP and then you can have multiple backends in terms of Ganesha. So this, uh, um, on the deployer perspective, this solved the problem of reserving more than one virtual IP for the same, on a 
specific network for Ganesha, basically. Uh, while the other the other solution means that you have to expose this uh, virtual IP on that network um, for each instance that you want to deploy. Uh, regardless, uh, I know that they are the same CephNFS cluster, so they just belong. You can solve the problem of active-active uh, within the NFS cluster. But from a deployer perspective, this is this could be problematic, especially because you have to uh, reserve like a subnet for uh, Ganesha, because you don't know in advance how many Ganesha instances the CFADM will spawn or create. And while today, uh, at least for the Trivolo project, reserving a virtual IP is something that you have to plan in advance before starting the deployment and a change, adding a new virtual IP today is not recommended, it's not possible. So that's the reason why yeah. I prefer the HA proxy one, because there is something that I understand it's feasible and it's simple enough to solve at the Ceph ADM or orchestrator level. Um, but it's problematic when you work in a bare metal world and you don't know in advance how many instances you don't have control over the reserved virtual IPs. That's the main driver. Okay, so the from what I understand, the the, the issue uh, is is allocating multiple more than one virtual IP uh, per cluster yeah. is is an issue from uh, uh, from the uh, OpenStack uh, um, configuration side. Okay, um, the we uh, we also need to consider that the uh, HA proxy solution uh, where. Uh, we have a HA proxy uh, in front of uh, multiple active Ganesha servers. Um, there are some drawbacks uh, to that use case too. For example, um, we, we would face issues uh, if we want to, uh, in the future, if if we are able to, um, you know, if we want to like shrink the cluster or like rebalance the cluster. Um, so, there might be issues of how HA proxy would, if if at all, it can interact with, in such a uh, in in such a scenario where we are, you know, uh, shrinking or uh, expanding the cluster. Um, how 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 would the clients be uh, NFS clients be moved? Um, so I I know that this feature is I mean right now. No one's working on it, but in the future, uh, with the HA proxy involved, I don't know how we're going to take care of that. Uh, um, so we'll have, we want to be aware of that as well. Um, and um, from my understanding, having a HA proxy in the middle, uh, even though there's a, uh, I think there is a network hop, um, but HA proxy is designed so that there's not too much of a overhead. Uh, so I think we are fine on that front, but that's also something you want to uh, consider. Great, all uh, all great points. Um, certainly, uh, I mean, it, it, it's worth bringing it out here and, uh, you know, talking to the community about our plans uh, transparently because we are pursuing multiple ones uh, and and committed to making sure you know uh, the NFS Ganesha gateway scale um, at, at least you know better than the uh, current solutions that we have with many deployment tools like triple O um, they're capable of uh, you know signing up one NFS Ganesha instance per set of backend um, and that may not really scale too much for uh, you know massive multi multi-tenant clouds um, yep that that's that's actually a good place to leave this topic for uh, and and move into the next one what do you think victoria 
Yeah, sounds good. I guess that um, something that was not mentioned that maybe we can um, clarify is about um, even if something on the Manila side and uh, more or less estimate um, when do we want to see this included or when we expect to see this included. And as far as I understand in Manila, we don't have to do any specific change. Um, I don't know about uh, if we need something on migration, which is well the next topic, so uh, we can cover that there. Uh, but uh, with regards to regular changes, we don't need to do anything in particular. And um, estimation, like we are expecting to see this landing by um, earlier next year, um, or maybe you know um, midway next year. At least that is what I understood. Great. So we would we would we would end up deploying uh, an NFS Ganesha cluster and and the ingress service which we are currently not deploying in the uh, in DevStack. Right. When we, yeah. When we have this. Awesome. Yeah, we will need to do those changes in DevStack plugin set in order to test this. Uh, but specifically to the Manila drivers, we don't do we don't need to do anything in particular. Sounds good. Yeah, we may need to uh, think more about the DevStack use case uh, because uh, uh, we currently have standalone jobs and deploying the Ingress daemon. Uh, it's useful to test the full stack of the feature and see they work well together. Uh, but we may, the, there is no code at the moment, I suspect, deploying the Ingress daemon. So this is actually an action item that we want to take on the dev stack side. All right, I think that uh, we could move now to the next uh, discussion topic. Um, so um, I guess we can start with the migration tool for Manila with CFFS NFS, and then move to DHS equals true for CFFS driver, unless somebody has a preference, you want to discuss something first. All right, so let's start with the migration tool then. Um, so um, during this set cycle, um, a new helper was introduced uh, for CFS and FS drivers um, that allows you, uh, you to leverage a CFADM deployment. Um, basically, now we have a, a new, um, well, I, you can specify with a configuration option in manina.com. Uh, which backend to use if you're using CFDM, you can use that helper uh, that basically use the uh, functionality provided by this um, or use the usual um, CFFS with NFS using Ganesha with Divas and well, uh, how it has been um, since the creation of uh, this driver. Um, so using CFDM uh, introduced several benefits. Um, for the operators mainly. Uh, and it's one of the recommended ways to use to deploy Ceph, uh, Ceph nowadays. So um, that's why we, we added this change to the driver. Uh, but uh, definitely this comes with a couple of issues. Um, basically for those users that have deployed Manila with CephFS and FS uh, in, in the, well, the, that have brownfield deployments uh, with the old helper, um, if they want to upgrade and use the new helper, they will need to look for a migration path. Um, and basically this includes um, moving all the different exports they have in their 
um, Ganesha and the FS Ganesha servers to the new ones. Um, and uh, well, uh, because of this, if we want to to propose uh, propose a, a um, holistic solution, we need to think about a migration path. So um, for today, we also wanted to discuss about that. Uh, try to think on possible ways to implement the migration tool for users uh, that are consuming NFS shares with CFS with NFS and that want to upgrade other uh, clusters to CFAD and manage NFS Ganesha. Um, I see, Gotham, that you added a couple of items regarding different problems we see. I don't know if you want to cover that. Yeah, sure. And I did want to make it a little more generic, at least on the uh, Manila driver side. Um, and the yeah, let's let's probably walk through those. Um, so right now we have a situation where we have um, two ways that you could interact with the NFS server from the Manila driver. Uh, one of them is uses the Dbus interface. Uh, it sets up and deletes exports and updates exports via via Dbus, and the other uh, uses the Ceph Manager API. And uh, behind the covers, you know that the Ceph Manager API is only going to work with NFS clusters that are deployed with Ceph Adam right now. And hopefully, uh, if if you're trying to use a Rook deployed Ceph cluster, um, they're going to work there as well. But it's not going to work with a standalone Ganesha instance that you're probably putting together, uh, uh, which we'd call the old way of doing things, which there are probably a lot of production deployments considering right now. Uh, sorry, doing right now. So um, the, the, the problem we have in front of us is how do we uh, migrate those exports? Um, and and we've kind of had the, uh, this discussion here in the in a past PTG where we've said that uh, you know you have a deployment that has an existing Ganesha server. Um, probably, I mean, not expecting it to be a cluster of NF, uh, NFS Ganesha servers because that is is something absolutely new, but uh, presume that it's it's a single NFS Ganesha server with uh, an IP address uh, which is represented in each of the exports uh, for all of the Manila shares. And uh, le let's say in uh, you, with the Antelope release, perhaps, or even with the Z release, you, you try to stand up a, um, a NFS Ganesha cluster. Um, with Ceph Adam, and you have a different set of IP addresses or IP address, uh, depending on what solution we uh, you, you end up using, uh, whether you end up using the Ceph ingress service uh, or the other solution that we just mentioned uh, with, you know, stable IP addresses to each of the NFS Ganesha servers. So you you have um the, uh, you you basically have a brand new server with with brand new uh, IPs, and we. We, uh, you, you're now with this situation where um, you've got to start advertising this on your cloud, and that is, I think, where the driver can uh, can can help a little bit. Um, although, it, uh, the disclaimer here is that when you're trying to move between these NFS servers, uh, you can try to minimize the disruption, but it will uh, it it'll certainly not be non-disruptive. Uh, because we are talking about workloads that have already mounted uh, these these shares on their, um, um, you know, on, on on client VMs, containers, bare metals, wherever, uh, and you're trying to move this, uh, uh, you know, uh, the servers that are exporting these shares. So, um, it, with Manila's perspective, we expect that um, you you want to be able to uh, run both of these for a while. Uh, right, so you have the old uh, NFS Ganesha server and this new NFS Ganesha cluster, uh, and uh, how, how can the driver evolve to make that possible? Well, one of the things that we can do is um, uh, is adopt the uh, adopt a different interface to to um, on driver startup that will that will kind of reconcile all of these shares and their exports. Uh, and we'll be implementing a, a couple of interfaces to do that. Uh, the first one is um, uh, called, I mean, let's go with the easier one, that's the ensure shares. Um, uh, we currently have a, an ensure share, and what Manila is doing at startup is it's is talking to the driver about each individual uh, share and asking it, uh, asking the driver to, to, to claim Hey, is this all right? Is is this available and all right on on the back end? 
And uh, what is happening is FFS driver right now is that the share is getting created. Um, and and that, that's only because, um, you know, subvolume creation on FFS is idempotent. Uh, so technically we are ensuring that the share exists and is exported um, with the help of the same logic as we would create a new share. Uh, that's that, that's the idea, and so we, uh, the the plan here with with um, trying to make that a little more efficient as part of this effort is to do uh, a bulk ensuring of these shares. Take that logic away from the the share manager. We don't really need to be given one share at a time. Uh, we already know what shares are available with us, but um, uh, go ahead and. Uh, you know, have our own logic to uh, ensure everything in a particular thread um, and uh, also reapply access rules uh, in that same um, routine, right? So we would gra grab the access rules from Manila and make sure that they're existing on the back end. What, th what this will do uh, for uh, a migration scenario is we are now talking to a new NFS cluster. Uh, although we may be aware that there is an old NFS cluster, but you, with the virtue of some configuration options, the the operator has told us that we, he, they would like to switch over to this new NFS cluster. So, which is why we would be doing all of this ensuring and, and access rule creation with the help of this new uh, NFS cluster that's configured. And um, presumably, I mean, uh, what, that's happening with the help of the Ceph manager uh, NFS APIs. Um, yeah, so that's the ensure shares part. Uh, and the other corresponding uh, helper that the uh, routine, uh, which will actually kick off this ensure shares, is is going to be how, when de defining when is it that we we want to do this ensuring. Right now, uh, the way things are, uh, on every service restart, we we end up ensuring each of the shares that's there, and on. Uh, and we know that this does not scale on large clusters. We've we've actually had pretty good operator feedback. I, I think uh, uh, Jose is here uh, from CERN, uh, and uh, you know although this uh, they don't use this Ceph NFS uh, backend, uh, they use the Ceph native uh, uh, protocol. It's the same exact problem, right? Uh, we we. We, uh, on every service restart, Manila tell, uh, tells the Ceph driver to make sure that a share exists, and and uh, you know the Ceph driver go, goes ahead and does this item put and creation. But it takes a unit of time that uh, you know deployments may not be able to afford for like a massive uh, use case. Like you know you probably have thousands of shares, uh, and your ser service startup is somehow uh, is is affected because of this. So um, the, I mean, so the idea here is to make sure that uh, you don't do this on every service startup, but you do this when you're trying to pick up a change, uh, and and the change for us is signaled with this routine. It's called get backend info, and uh, it is basically going to hash um, uh, something and st and store a hashed state based on three configuration options. Um, th this is just me putting the things together if we're yet to get this implemented um, and uh, and we can brainstorm any more config options that will form this state, right? But for now, um, there are three configuration options. One of them would be the uh, current NFS uh, IPs that you're providing. And this you could provide with the help of a couple of config options right now if you're not using the Ceph uh, cluster way, right? You, you, you have CephFS Ganesha server IP or CFFS Ganesha's export IPs. So if you've configured any of these, uh, we'll pick those up. And the the new config option the, that Victoria's change introduced uh, is CFFS NFS cluster ID. Uh, this will signal to the driver that um, the driver's got to start using the Ceph manager APIs um, to communicate to uh, an NFS cluster, which is not the same as using um, the, the Dbus APIs, which we were doing in the past. And the, the third config option that, that is going to be new is CFFS ensure all shares salt. Uh, and this will default to a particular value. So basically when you when when we have this routine implemented, the first time we are going to end up doing exactly what we were doing always, which is ensuring all of the shares. And if uh, and from there on forwards, if any of these values changes, we would kick off the ensure shares routine again uh, on service uh, service startup. Um, 
we've already optimized this a bit to make sure that it does not uh, prevent the driver from completely starting up. Uh, we, the driver will be operational uh, while this is happening in the background. That's that, that's another um, uh, improvement that we made on the Manila core side, not not uh, and, and affects all of the drivers. Um, but the idea with these two routines right now is that we will have uh, a way to represent the, you know exports as they are moving, um, as as a deployment is planning a move from a decommission, decommissioning an old uh, NFS server and bringing up uh, a new a new set of uh, NFS uh, servers with the help of uh, Cephadom, for for instance. Um, I'll pause here if, if there are any questions and I can delve a little further into any of these. Awesome, Gautam. Thank you so much for, for the detail on the uh, proposed solution. Um, so I probably it doesn't need a, a clarification, but basically what we are presenting here is a way to migrate without actually running um, a script or anything like in a day to operation or to that to do the migration, but changing a configuration option in my left conf to indicate that we want to use uh, the NFS Ganesha server that is deployed with Ceph ADM uh, and the migration is going to happen um, in a well um, more automated way uh, by checking uh, the backend info and doing the ensure share operation that we already have. Yeah, and, yeah, and and presumably you will toggle these configuration options uh, when you're bringing up the cluster, uh, the NFS Ganesha cluster, and when you're decommissioning the old one, uh, the old NFS Ganesha server. So you you would do this at least twice through uh, to enable this migration. And um, and what Manila will do is is what's explained in, uh, on lines 59 to 62, right? Uh, we'll end up uh, consuming these old IP addresses that you have uh, with the help of those configuration options. As you were always doing, uh, will will but we will expose those ex, um, uh, export paths associated with those specific IPs as non-preferred routes, and uh, that should be uh, some way that we. I mean, we would probably have to document this, and 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 deployers would still have to make users familiar with the uh, with the aspect. Um, you know, because deployers are going to take a disruption. We we assume that. Um, they're, they're going to talk to their end users and tell them that the workloads have to be uh, will be affected. They'll have to remount based on a brand new export location and and uh, and stuff. And maybe there is something that deployers can do to hide that fact away from uh, end users. But it it may not be a, a, something generic that we can go ahead and implement in uh, Manila. That's the that's the issue here. So it'll be a song and dance, but we'll uh, end up documenting when and how you can change these values here. Yeah. Okay, nice. I guess that my only concern is about, um, well, you mentioned it, that the insure share operation might be a bit costly uh, and more in a case in which, well, we need to uh, ensure the totality of the shares that you have when you're doing this uh, migration between quotes. Um, but in that case, are we expecting, like, for instance, to respect uh, the operator to, as you said, as you mentioned, that, you know, to, to share, to disclose with the users that they're going to have some sort of, you know, service disruption um, and include, you know, the time that the ensure share operation takes in order to finish this as, you know, as the specter estimated time. Uh, so we don't expect this, uh, the operation of doing this to do any kind of disruption. Um, okay. So the, the disruption is when they end up decommissioning and, and you know, uh, probably 
uh, removing and cleaning up old NFS servers, right? And then they would have to come back to Manila to, or or rather, uh, they'd just tell Manila the servers are gone by the virtue of not configuring these uh, these old IP IP addresses. And Manila will just say, okay, I'm not going to represent those export paths. Um, and so the control plane, you're just not going to see those exports showing up. Um, but maybe the server uh, is then going to be shut down gracefully, or whatever. Like, you know, they have their own decommissioning uh, time uh, that they want, you know, make sure that workloads are ready for it and stuff. But this will give us a way to kind of signal that's coming. Um, so users can continue to use old exports, new exports. And some one fine day, you know, when the operator is ready to shut down with enough signaling, they can go ahead and make this change. Uh, but none of these changes should affect anything on the data path. Okay, awesome. Thank you for addressing my, my questions, Gautam. I don't know if anybody else have uh, any question about the, the issue and the proposed solution, maybe some feedback. Uh, Gautam and Victoria have, uh, uh, I'm guessing there are some users upstream that uh, deploy this driver or uh, in the production clusters, have you been able to talk to the operators, uh, get their, uh, uh, you know, let them know about this uh, disruptive upgrade and yeah. and uh, what uh, if uh, what their concerns are? Uh, yeah, good point. Like last time, uh, I mean, what's merged in the Z cycle, uh, we've not had any sort of migration. Uh, logic merged in the set cycle, right? So we are expecting people that are going to turn on uh, these new configuration options in the Z cycle to, to have done this only in greenfield environments. So you're probably using an NFS cluster, but you're doing it only because you have a brand new Manila installation or a brand new CFFS cluster that you're integrating or something like that. Um, but when this comes, yes, we'll we'll probably be writing out writing down documentation and sending stuff to the mailing list because uh, there are different deployers, different ways they're doing things. Uh, we know of one very intimately because uh, Triple O, uh, you know, deploys this in a particular way. But you're right, like, you know, operators have their own tooling and there is upstream uh, tooling that's outside of Triple O uh, that needs to be aware of this. I'll, I will add another point here that uh, those config options with which uh, signal state, um, I mean, you, you you could be using it with Ceph NFS, but if you're using native Ceph NFS, like, um, I mean, like, for example, if you're, uh, if you're CERN, for instance, uh, that, that, that has a massive use case for native Ceph NFS, um, that backend, uh, get backend info still in, uh, includes, uh, I mean, it does include a CFFS ensure all share salt that's going to be shared between these two drivers, these two protocols. So if you would like to kick off an ensure share as a deployer, uh, you can still do that by, ma by manipulating that salt. For native CFFS as well. That's the idea, at least. All right. Anything else on this topic? We probably can move directly to the next one because we don't have too much time to cover it and it's I think quite long. So if there is any other comment for the uh, migration path for 
um, service and affairs, um, we can uh, continue discussing offline. So, all right. Uh, DHSS equals true for a best driver. Um, so this actually is, a, re is a, a feature request that was raised during the opening for summit uh, in Berlin by several uh, Manila uh, with CFFS and FS users, uh, sorry, uh, with CFFS native users. Um, currently the CFFS driver, whether you use it with native or NFS or NFS via asset manager only supports the HS equal false. So I was right on the first place. Uh, sorry for correcting. Um, so this presents a couple of issues. Um, well, actually several limitations for this. Um, so native CFFS remains uh, to be useful only in clouds with uh, trusted projects or users. Uh, sharing an NFS gateway or even a cluster among unrelated project users isn't scalable or secure. Uh, and to partition projects uh, per best practice would mean using different Ceph backends. Uh, either entirely separate subclusters or isolated file systems and BS uh, on different NFS servers. Um, so we have been, actually it's set proposed solution there, but actually we don't have a proposed solution yet. Uh, we have been brainstorming on the different uh, needs that these uh, feature requests have and the current um, capabilities, well, the current um, features we have in, in Ceph in order to implement this. Um, a lot of the content that we have in there was actually clarified and facilitated by Romana. Uh, so Romana, do you want to, to share a bit uh, about resource isolation and how we can implement that? Yeah, I mean, uh, as far as I'm aware, I mean, I don't, uh totally um, uh, understand the, the requirement. Um, but uh, what, what, what I can gather is that uh, the deployers, uh, sorry, the users want the driver um, itself to, uh, to be able to deploy multiple CFFS uh, file systems, or uh, I mean, uh, or, or what we call volumes these days. Um, so the expectation is the native driver um, be able to deploy multiple CFFS volumes where each CFFS volume uh, comprises of its own uh, set of MDSs, uh, typically at least one active MDS and a couple of standbys and its own uh, CFFS uh, metadata pool and data pool. So, um, so that's the requirement, I think. Um, so we want to be, uh, um, we need to consider that uh, each of these uh, metadata servers uh, uh, to ho host them, uh, uh, it's, it's, it might, it's not uh, lightweight. Typically the MDS uh, is uh, MDS hosts uh, need to be a, uh, uh, Need to have a very good configuration in terms of uh, because it's CPU intensive. Uh, similarly, uh, having more metadata pools and data pools has overheads on the OSDs. Uh, so we need to be uh, so the the deployer needs to be aware of that. They shouldn't think like launching uh, separate uh, CFFS volumes is uh, is cheap as as cheap. Um, so we need. Uh, so we we'll want to make sure that uh, we don't make it too easy on that front. Um, um, so that 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 was uh, one of my concerns with the solution. Um, um, and I understand the requirement uh, is because we want strong isolation of the metadata workload, um, and. Uh, and solutions such as making sure that uh, each CFFS subtree or CFFS subvolume uh, being pinned to a particular uh, MDS is not good enough. Um, so in that case, yeah, definitely, this seems to be one of the solutions. Um, 
Yeah, I was also thinking, I mean, what 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 stops the uh, operator from having multiple instances of this FFS driver, uh, each driver pointing to a different file system? Um, no, you're right. Uh, right now, that's the only, that's the solution that that probably uh, folks are using to uh, segregate users, and the way that'll work, and that's the, the way we've recommended it. Right, the, the way that'll work is you've done the uh, the work to have different file systems, and you probably have a sufficient number of them that your infrastructure can afford, uh, because you've sized the MDS, like you said, you've done uh, all, all of that background work outside of Mandala. We have nothing to uh, do with it, except that we see that new file system as a brand new uh, Ceph backend. And we, we assume that you are probably segregating your share types in such a way that you you uh, make sure, uh, you know, different tenants have access to a different share type that will map eventually to one or more of these uh, CephFS backends in an isolated fashion. So you don't have two untrusted tenants that are uh, that are going to share the, uh, the same backend um, CephFS file system, even if they're coming from the same CephFS cl uh, Ceph cluster. That's that. That is an alternative. Yes. But um, I mean, the, the, I think the uh, the the ask here was if we could do this a little more automated, uh, because I guess uh, you know if the tooling is capable, if the driver is capable of creating these file systems, um, it would enable you know tenant-driven uh, isolation. Which is which is good to know. Like you know, the, the, this is exactly the sort of stuff we wanted to uh, inquire. Which is, how scalable is this really? And is there a way for us to know the scalability limits that the driver can somehow aid with, or, or is this going to be a pipe dream? You know, we just we just handle a hand a big knob and uh, it's going to break down the whole Ceph cluster or something because somebody created way too many file systems. Yeah, I, I, I mean the the capability of CephFS uh, um, to have multiple file systems that was declared stable and specific, um, but uh, I I don't know about the uh, practical limits of the maximum number of file systems a Ceph cluster can have. Um, for example, uh, uh, when 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 we were actually uh, testing the number of snapshots that are allowed uh, uh, per, uh, you know, per Ceph file system, um, we identify that uh, much later, you know. So only while it's uh, scale testing, I don't think that's been done right now. I'm not sure if there are other operators that have like a lot of file systems um, for each, uh, uh, for, for the Ceph cluster. Um, I I know that there are uh, deployments where they have multiple MTSs uh, uh, in the tens. Uh, I'm not sure that they have multiple MTSs per file system in the hundreds, but in the tens, yes. Uh, so I was uh, so the general recommendation right now is to have uh, sub volume groups um, uh, pinned to a particular uh, you know uh, MTS rank. Um, that's what we recommend right now. Uh, so I was wondering if that's a solution that we that the operators would be uh, okay with for now. Um, that's something we do for uh, ODF as well, where um, we suggest for the, for uh, the ODF project as well, where uh, we want uh, the open OpenStack uh, sorry the OpenShift Data Foundation, where we have. Uh, Subvolume groups, FFS subvolume groups, uh, being pinned to a particular uh, MDS rank. Uh,
Yeah, I, I'm I'm actually interested in this sub volume group stuff because um, I mean, when you first implemented the driver, I think we had support for um, group snapshots, and that's all uh, you know. I know about sub volume groups uh, as as a capability, but you're saying that uh, if you were to uh, use, you you could use this even for tenant isolation. In a way. Yeah, uh, I think uh, the, we can make sure that the uh, sub volume group uh, is served from only a particular uh, uh, MDS rank, the metadata. So that's that, that that would help in terms of you know um, isolating the me metadata workload, right? Uh, but in terms of uh, hard requirements of metadata isolation, of course, having metadata, separate metadata servers and separate uh, file systems uh, is is better. Uh, so I, I don't know what, what the requirements are from the operators when they uh, ask, ask you folks. Uh, so is, is there, um, I mean, uh, where do I, where do I find that? Yeah, good point. Uh, and, and I think I'm going to put uh, Jose on the spot. Uh, Jose, are you able to like speak? And um, I, I we have had a chat uh, over email in the past. I'm just wondering if you could provide any more context here. Okay, so hi everyone. Yeah, I was like uh, busy with other things at the same time. So this is why I was like uh, not kind of actively in the, in the call. So what, what do you want to know? Uh, Ramana, do you want to uh, sh share the question? Reform the, yeah, reformulate the question, please. Yeah. Uh, the question is, what is the, what is the requirement? You want the native driver to deploy individual file systems um, and, and each of these file system in a separate uh, I guess separate uh, neutron subnet. Uh, you want that to be automated? Is that the ask? The, the thing is, on our side, we don't. We are not using any uh, kind of isolation between projects. They are kind of under the same the same uh, laboratory, and then uh, we're kind of uh, using different clusters in case that we are sharing with other with other other clients of the of the organization. So this, I understand the kind of the idea of uh, separating these sub volume groups, but I'm not. <laughs> what I what I would say is like we are not using uh, these uh, DHS at the moment, at least certainly not using that. I guess the question is then: uh, Would you require would you require in some certain future uh, DHS infrastructure that is multi-tenancy support? Yeah, I see. I see the point of having something similar for the all the uh, finance and uh, things that that they want to kind of keep uh, hidden from the rest of the organization. So I, I see use cases. They are not using it yet, but I see I see a use case for that. All right. So in 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 that case, then um, how isolated uh, should the report, the resources be? Um, because uh, for what I understand from Ramana, it's like it's uh, there are several components in which we can ensure um, resource isolation, and uh, like yeah, we will need to understand how uh, strict uh, we're going to get on that aspect. I mean, uh, for example, that uh, like I was saying, we can have each sub volume group uh, to be, you know, be uh, pinned to a particular uh, MDS rank, and also on the data side, we can we can make sure that you know that there are radars namespace isolated, right? Um, so, so those are like much much more lightweight ways. Uh, but uh, I'm just uh, so, but. Of course, if the operator is okay with deploying multiple file systems, I mean, if we can we can do that. Uh, so, so, so my question is: Is that the expectation that for each of your 
use case you you uh, mean for each of your applications you want a separate file system or um what what, yeah, what, what what's what's stopping you from uh deploying like multiple file systems i mean i i, I don't know if you uh, what, what the number of file systems that you use in your cluster um no so so the, the thing is that we we do very we do a kind of a very simple setup we have one per cluster and we have many clusters and then we uh, with uh, we have shared types that map to all those clusters. It's like it's very simple. We don't go we don't go kind of uh, overboard. Uh, the 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 thing is like a kind of for for us kind of the, it's more or less like easy to have a uh, have equipment to have a new cluster and then uh, actually make it only available for the uh, for the say the finance. An HR areas of the of the laboratory, uh, having sub volume sub volume groups that will help to merge those clusters into having a kind of a single one. But, uh, I don't see it to to have it in the kind of short term uh, short term future. Cool. In order to like you know have not, not have someone clobber up uh, you know the MDS servers, that's kind of what uh, pinning uh, would help us with, right? Uh, could we could we kind of say you know this MDS? Uh, I mean, we can set ranks, but is that also going to disallow uh, you know other paths to be used for that particular MDS? Ramana, is that an option? I mean the, the the primary use case for uh, you know pinning an MDS subtree to a particular rank was because the native uh, load balancer that was in CFS wasn't wasn't doing uh, a great job of of uh, load balancing the metadata across different MDSs. Mm -hmm. So so the solution was that the operators manually you know pin a particular subtree to a particular MDS so that the uh, MDS load balance that doesn't have to do that when the uh, you know the subtree becomes too big the metadata uh, so the and that, and that's yeah. what we do yeah and that's yeah. what we do so that's something that you already do um so the 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 question is uh you I mean I I don't know what uh you 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 want here though that you want um separate file systems to be managed by the driver or uh what's the i mean I, I don't understand the requirement honestly so okay uh <laughs> Well, I, can, I can double check with the uh, with my colleagues that are handling the clusters themselves. But then the the thing is, on, on our side, the kind of the pinning is basically uh, happening when we have kind of an extra load on one of the or one of the MBSs is due to kind of a client that is uh, particularly chatty, and then it's like a, the Ceph team is like kind of monitoring those uh, those um, clients and. Pin, pin in them in uh, in case that it's like we have heavy load on the on the MDSs, as we have multiple of those. Um, Interesting, and that's happening dynamically, right? Like technically, it's not at create time. No, it's not a create time. It's like where yeah. you, it's like based based on load. Yeah. I mean, if you want to more, take a bit more detail on, on uh, how they are doing those things, uh, I can kind of contact them and try to provide some some more input in here, if you want, for this yeah, particular that, topic. That would be very helpful. Thank okay. you. Uh, because, yeah, I mean, the kind of scale that you operate at, if you're trying to support that, uh, I'm sure it's very helpful to the other operators as well. Yeah. So, sure thing. All right. So okay, we've determined that tenant isolation uh, right now is is with the help of you know dedicated file systems and and right now it's still possible by using uh, different Manila backends. 
And for somebody that's, uh, that's uh, you know, uh, deploying at the scale like CERN, you probably have, I mean, they, they, they do have uh, isolated Ceph clusters, each with a single file system, um, uh, as well as different Manila backends and, and uh, you know, mapped to different share types and stuff. So that solution is working, uh, except if you were trying to be, you know, a different tenant that's probably got data in different Ceph clusters, it might make sense to um, have some sort of an automation. Uh, that's, I think, what I see the use cases being. Uh, but uh, what we also hear from the CFFS side is that it's uh, we we don't know how 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 much this scales yet. Um, so uh, you know, having a DHSS true mode and handing that down to um, end users uh, might actually test the limits of this stuff, uh, which which is not done uh, on the product side yet. Do do I understand that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Awesome. Yep. But it's certainly something that we can we we, we can keep discussing about. Uh, thanks for asking the question and and thanks Ramana for brainstorming with us about uh, you know how these things could be done. I gu I guess we should probably have this converted into some sort of a doc uh, for best practices, uh, and and this applies to native CFFS and and SFS NFS right like. If you're trying to uh, put, um, you know, your tenants on different parts of the RCEF cluster, uh, and and partition it in that way, so it would it might make it useful documentation at least, and show us what's required in the future. So I'll take that AI for us. But uh, that is what I had, uh, Victoria, on this topic. There are other things. Do you want to uh, cover those? Uh, no, I think we are okay for now. And actually, we are over time. Uh, it's yeah. a greater uh, hour now. So we can wrap up here. And then we have the other topic to talk about the CI. Um, and yeah, definitely, we can follow up in any of these items offline uh, in the usual channels. Awesome. So, yeah, sorry, Carlos, <laughs> let's wrap up here then. <laughs> no problem, yeah. So uh, if uh, you all would like to stay uh, and, and so we could have like the operator hour, I think we have been on this call like for one hour and 10 straight. So uh, let's catch a break, like five minutes, and then we would get back to the operator hour and we can extend a little bit the operator hour. Uh, I think we, I, we have some uh, operators here in the room with us, which is good. So we can get some good feedback for the operator. So um, five minutes break then. Um, so we can uh, get some water and so on. And we will be back in five minutes time. Okay, so welcome back everyone. So uh, this is our last topic of the day, which is the CFFSCI issues. So uh, welcome, Victoria Francesco, floor is yours. Thanks, Carlos. All right, that's a, again, this is something going to be a group effort because <laughs> we haven't coordinated this. Yeah. But I'll defer to Victoria. She's been doing all the yeah. CI work with exactly. Francisco. So let's start. <laughs> so yeah, uh, maybe okay, I can Victoria. introduce, and, and yeah, we can just um, brainstorm together. Um, but actually, uh, this, this topic it has a lot uh, in common uh, with what we were discussing uh, Wednesday, I think it was, uh, sorry, Tuesday in the retrospective. No, sorry, Monday, I'm lost. <laughs> well, during the retrospective, we were talking about uh, CI and the fact that we need to decouple um, uh, how we are, well, uh, running our jobs because uh, basically we are hitting some resource issues and this is the same case uh, for the CFFS drivers, uh, both CFFS native and CFFS NFS uh, has been quite unstable, uh, not only with um, the current uh, drivers um, for CFFS native and CFFS NFS, but also with the new one with CFADM 
And this is mainly, well, again, to the lack of resources that we have available in the notes. Um, so because of this, we started brainstorming on how we should um, rest, well, restructure the test so we can stop uh, hitting so many um, failures and well, uh, have more stable CI. Um, I guess that, well, this is, uh, it, it worth mentioning, this is a project that we are framing for an Orichi internship. Um, so we are going to be working on, on the proposed solution uh, with an intern. Uh, but well, some of the ideas uh, we have for um, fixing this issue is, uh, well, we tried running with lower concurrency. Uh, it didn't help too much, to be honest. Uh, breaking up the test with separate jobs, um, we separated API and a scenario jobs, um, but still, for instance, in API, uh, it would become more stable, but for a scenario which usually take more resources, uh, we, we didn't get too, too good results. Uh, run a smaller subset of tests is good, it helps, but definitely uh, reduce coverage, so it's not the best um, workaround and isolate Ceph cluster with multi-node jobs. This is the internship project I was mentioning. Um, we probably want to invest in researching this uh, solution. Um, as discussed in this session, I cannot recall which, one, <laughs> which day it was. Um, um, the multi-node job is something that has been uh, done by other projects. Um, I don't exactly know the details on how we could make this work, um, but this is a possibility. Maybe Francesco, you have more details or Gotham, you have more details on how we can implement this. The point is that basically uh, having CFADM, not sure about the older jobs, but with CFADM, we are introducing an extra uh, amount of resources that are needed. and. Um, regardless of the number of tests and how that stage is executed, the components you're deploying are still there. So the resources are consumed in, uh, at deployment time. So at that point, you uh, can try to separate jobs or uh, have a smaller number of tests, or tests but uh, I suspect this is not enough to solve the problem. And yeah, as you mentioned, the multi node can be the a, a good solution to solve this problem having a separated uh, a self cluster deployed in a separated node that can interact with the osp uh is a good opportunity to see what changes uh, i don't recall if we have still problems with the Ceph fuse and how it went that uh, that part maybe Godam, you recall better than me. Um, yeah, okay. So Cephuse, we uh fixed something and it actually fixed the issue. <laughs> Sorry, I'm blanking too. It's like the last session and we're like uh, yeah, forgetting things. I, yeah. <laughs> but but you're right, like we did have an issue with Cephuse, and I think we're currently skipping the tests as far as Ceph Adam is con concerned. And with the older yeah. uh, uh, stuff, we we've just uh, we're just using an older Ubuntu image because uh, you know the newer uh, image seems to have some issues with the client, uh, and we don't pull the client from download.ceph.com. We actually just use what's packaged by Ubuntu um, because it gets built in with um, yeah. with modular image elements and stuff. So that's where we are with Ceph use. And I think we went back and forth with uh, the CephFS team, mainly Ramana here. Uh, and while Ceph use is never going to go away, like, you know, it is a user space client that, you know, end users are going to end up using. Uh, we felt like we could stop testing it as much in the upstream CI uh, as we are today, which is we run the same scenario tests that we run with Ceph, um, you know, kernel client uh, as well, uh, you know, with the Ceph use client where, you know, we're, we're really like, not really get, gaining much of an integration advantage over there. Uh, uh, you know, one of these could could serve uh, tell, telling us whether something is broken in Manila uh, and this FFS uh, driver. Uh, we don't really need to to be testing both. Is what we kind of concluded. 
um, they, uh, mainly owing to our lack of resources uh, in 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 um, uh, getting the uh, you know CI running all of these tests in the same way without running into timeouts or spurious failures that we'll end up ignoring uh, in the long term. So that's the state of affairs with Cepheus. Yeah, we, uh, I recall we also had that function in DevStack to disable CFDM after the deploy uh, to see if that uh, was something related, you know, resource consuming after the deployment that we don't need actually, but looks like that didn't solve anything. So um, maybe it did, and we don't have a way to request more resources uh, for this uh, CI job, so basically, the multi having a multi node job is the uh, only way to solve this problem. I suspect that that's it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, uh, I, the question I had is: uh, is the switching from using a volume client to manage a volumes module? Is that what is causing this issue with the native? uh driver or you or has manila just increased the number of tests that they run against the native driver i uh, think we see timeouts also in jobs in rbd jobs right so it's um a more generic problem that rather than a cffs native job consuming more resources because of a component that changes not sure if you have more yeah. to add, Gautam. No, yeah, that's what I was going to suggest. Because we, uh, I mean, with the jobs that uh, Victoria and Francesco were working on on the CFFS side, for both native and NFS, we never hit timeouts. Uh, we were seeing test failures uh, because you know of resource contention issues. Like uh, you, you know, there there was an uh, there was an issue where the NFS server would just die on us because of lack of memory uh, uh, and and lack of memory also would mean we we lose certain uh, connections to rabbit mq or database. Gone or database is gone or something like that yeah so, so that this are shows up as some random failure yeah mm -hmm. and and it was not like that it was because of a timeout it's like <laughs> basically the the tests um will uh hit the timeout and, and never finish and that would end on a failure but that was because it was taking too much which i believe that was mostly the case for set queues since uh being in the user level it basically had a bit more latency to, to well perform different operations we needed for the shares okay so, yeah, right. so we had plan to switch to kernel client for the native driver and testing scenario tests yeah, that, that's currently what's happening. Uh, we've disabled the Cephuse tests on that CI job, which was running both Cephuse and kernel tests at the same time. Like, you know, it was running them one after the other. Yeah, so for, so for now, for the native driver, uh, we just run the, we use the kernel client scenario tests and um, and then we don't use CephADM to deploy CephFS uh, volumes and um and 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 still we are facing resource issues is what you're saying so the uh the resource issues don't happen if you don't have self fadam in the picture uh resource issues are not a thing for the older uh self native ci uh so that is basically the rpm based install uh, sorry the package based install that we do with devstack plugin self uh the usual way uh, native ci native cffs rarely fails um, if it fails, it's something else that's going on, not really resource contention issues. NFS, on the other hand, we still see resource contention issues um, because we're running, you know, the NFS service and uh, along with the Ceph cluster and stuff. Um, but again, it is hard to quantify something like that with NFS because sometimes these failures are just random. Hey, I was not able to spawn a Nova VM, um, but it's not been as bad as the Ceph Adam jobs. The Ceph Adam jobs, uh, we 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 see, uh, we have we are forced to run with concurrency one, so just have one test thread uh, at at a, at a given point of time, and that test thread is just executing everything serially, right? Uh, and even with that, uh, we end up seeing a time where you know 
because we spawned a new VM uh, and you know, we suddenly lose access to the uh, MySQL database, uh, which is weird. Um, but that's happening because we're running out of memory and and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's all uh, seems to be related to using Cephadia. Okay. Yeah. Mainly, we have had an unstable CFFSCI, but we'll put that aside for the uh, for the time being to deal with this uh, aspect of we want to move all of these jobs to Cephadim. Uh, and I'm going to throw another wrench in the thing that um, the upstream uh, QA community is discussing, uh, you know, migrating all of the jobs to uh, Jammy Jellyfish. That's, a, that's the next LTS from Ubuntu. And uh, they figured that the Ceph packages are not available. So uh, this kind of makes it more urgent for us to get Ceph Adam jobs working. Um, because uh, if packages are not yet available and we don't know if the Ceph uh, community plans to release packages for Jammy Jellyfish. That's maybe something you know, Ramana, or maybe you know somebody that we can ask. So, um, yeah, which packages are which packages are you concerned about? Um, so, on download.ceph.com, I think I I put a link out there, but I'll find yeah, it again. Let me do that. Look at that. I think we went here, for instance, for the Quincy builds. And the same thing with, uh, I mean, if we were to use Pacific. And this is where the CI is looking at as well, right? Like the dev stack plugins looking in these places. So which version uh, are we using nowadays? LTS is like 2204. Isn't that jellyfish? No, we're, we're not yet using that as the base operating system. We're using 2004. Uh, okay, so we do though in uh, the service image. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's separate. Like we're, that's we, we moved that term. early because yeah, we, we had issues in the past when we kind of changed that later. So right. we, we went ahead and did that early. So this time we are ahead. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking on which would be the package because um, upstream Ceph now is the R release, right? Upstream Quincy was released already. Yeah, uh, but Quincy is still the uh, latest, the latest stable, stable release, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we'll probably want to see with that, but probably they are. They usually have seen like um, the builds for Ubuntu being uh, a bit more bleeding edge. So they will have builds for our release, for instance, instead of Quincy. Oh, um, I see. But I don't see that either. Like, uh, I don't see Reef at all on this, at least maybe it's on, uh, uh, what is the other thing that we use for uh, the Ceph build system? Sorry, I'm forgetting names. It's Shaman. Shaman, Shaman. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I was looking for it and see if we already have builds there. So it's just a matter of publishing. We should probably ask. Yeah, good point. Uh... So who would we ask? Go back to the Ceph list? Because I think yeah. somebody tried asking. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, the Ceph users list would be the okay. best place to ask this. You can just ask them that uh, you need this for the CI, and I can also follow up with a specific person who does this. I see. 
Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, but so, uh, emailing the suffusers list would be the first thing to do. Yep, let me take an AI there. Uh, and this might be on uh, Victoria and I, because I think we've heard this in other rooms this week that the community wants to do this, but we, they're unsure how to, uh, you know, how to even check for these builds because they're not available. But let's follow up. Oh, nice. Thanks, Francisco. So that means that the automation can just make those builds and it's a matter of making them available um, as per the previous versions. So maybe asking in the mailing list is a good option. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. I'll copy you folks and start an email after this uh, call. All right, I, I kind of sidetracked um, this discussion a bit. Let's follow up on the jammy jellyfish stuff, um, the, uh, but that gives us a little more time and uh, Francisco and uh, and Ashley are, are sponsoring a outreach project um, that might help us get a solution to this, right? Which is the, the, the immediate problem that we yeah, have. That the multi multi node job testing. Yep. Agreed. Okay. Any uh, any any other things that you wanted to bring up? All right, Victoria, is that all? Um... Yes, I think so. I guess that we can summarize like which is the current plan for this. Um, basically, the first three items we have in there, I'm going to fix that on the other call later, are uh, different approaches we try, but we end up um, figuring out that uh, these approaches are not enough. So we are going to proceed to um, well, split um, the environments in a multi-node job, uh, separate controllers and compute from the storage. Um, there is an internship overage oh, project proposed for this one. And uh, Francesco and Ashley are going to be leading this one. If not, obviously, uh, probably we are going to be working as a community uh, trying to deliver that. Um, this is target for, uh, for this release. And um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be part of the rest of the enhancement we are going to do in our CI. 
So um, I guess that's a pretty good summary. And the action item is to follow up to see if we can get uh, safety DM packages included for um, jelly, uh, jammy fish. Jammy jellyfish, there we go. <laughs> that's it. Awesome, thanks. I think Douglas just responded my ping. Let's see if he has the link like ready. In another case, we can just uh, follow up on uh, a weekly Manila meeting maybe, and uh, we can continue to talk about this or even um, in a, in another call we might have to talk about this. Let's see here. Yep. Okay, awesome. Uh, thanks. Yeah, so I think that uh, if there's nothing to add, um, I think that wraps up our day. Uh, of, of PTG, so yeah, it uh, we had the all, all things Ceph hour, Ceph hour and also the operator hour. Uh, there was uh, another topic uh, for today, but uh, we can push that uh, for tomorrow, uh, and we can talk about that tomorrow. I will take a look at the schedule, and uh, we can uh, do some adjustments. Okay, so yeah, thank you very much for joining today's session. Uh, it we had great discussions and uh, the operator hour also had like good feedback uh it, it was also nice to see that uh jose maybe uh, like got a solution for one of his biggest pain points uh, on, on the cloud like something that will help him uh so yeah it's good uh thank you very much for joining um i will see you tomorrow at i think it's 10 yep just be, just let me confirm. Oh, it's 13. You'd see tomorrow. So, so it's, yep. I'll see you tomorrow at 13 UTC. And yeah, we will have some more topics to discuss. But yeah, thank you very much and talk to you tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.